All right, so we're back. So if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, then you're missing out because we have a lot of cool free stuff related to programming. If you want to be our subscribers and join us and get some freebies in your training, we try to send out a new video every Monday. But just click on the subscribe button. I think it's up there somewhere. Once you're subscribed, you'll just get an email once a week with the newest video that we have. It's usually short to the point, teaches you something small, and that's always helpful, five minutes once a week. Now, if you want more than that, then check us out at Zero to Geek. But let's start, well, let's continue from last week. Last week, we created a line um, in one, we created a line using the Pythagorean theorem. So we, we found the distance between two dots. Once we found the distance between two dots, mission accomplished. Now, only problem is, is a lot of times you have elements that are in completely different movie clips, such as in our example that we were going to be working on today. So in our example that we're working on today, we have one movie clip, which is really called Ball 2. But we have another movie clip, which is called Holder. And Holder itself has a movie clip called Ball 1. Not only that, Ball 1 that's inside of that Holder movie clip is not at 0, 0 of that movie clip. It's actually at minus 125 and minus 206. Now, that means its position is not actually the same. Now, if we took our code exactly the same as the same code as we had in our last week section that if you haven't seen it yet then i strongly recommend you check it out in the link right here um and if you saw it already so let's continue so we're going to grab that link that that script and i'm assuming at this point you already know that script and we're going to paste that script in but if we paste this script in and just adjust the fact that ball one is now inside of a holder so i'm just going to type there holder because now ball one is inside of a holder. And if I run my application now, we'll see that the value that I'm getting it back is 687, contrary to the value that we were getting earlier in one, in sample one. And in sample one, the value was 407. Now, the reason is, is exactly because exactly what we were talking about, that actually, when you look at this variable, it really is in a completely different place because it's actual X position, it's zero zeros right here. So that's adjusting it. And really, the line that we're drawing is from here all the way to here. And that's why we're getting that different value. But that's not what we really want. So let's fix it. So let's go back into our code. And in our code, what we want to do is we want to learn how to use something new, which is called the local to global. And you'll, by the way, learn what global to local is as well. Now, what we want to do is we want to create a new point. If you haven't created points before, it's just a basic object that contains just X and Y values. So I'm going to create a new point and I'm just going to call it um, P line C. Mm, well, actually line A and it's going to be a number and our number. Well, it's actually going to be a point, not a number. It's going to be a point and we're create a new point. And the point itself that we want to give into it, we actually want to. Oh, actually, we're not going to create a new point yet. What we want to do is actually we want to get a point. Um, from local to global, which is actually, it, it expects a point and then it returns a point. So let me explain first what local to local to global is. Local to global, what it is, is you approach a movie clip in its local, in its local XY coordinate. So for example, if we go to our XY coordinate, if we go to our holder, we could ask it this element, what position is it relative to the global, the global scope that's above it? Thus, in other words, if we would ask the real position of this element inside of the holder, it would give us the value of minus 125 and 206. But that's not what we want. We actually want the value, the actual real value of where the point is on our current movie clip, on, on our external movie clip. So to do that, all we have to do is basically ask it, ask our holder that contains our ball one to actually get our local to global. So we're going to give it now a local point. Now, this local point that we're going to give to the local to global is going to be actually our ball's x and y coordinates. Our ball, ball 1, x, and our ball 1, y. Now, once we gave it that point, so basically we send in the point of our ball, which is the internal x and y coordinates inside of the holder, and we're asking it to return from this local variable or these local x, y coordinates to convert them into the coordinates of the movie clip above it, to the global movie clip. Thus, once this returns back, it should give us the x, y coordinates of the external area. So all we have to do now is instead of referring in line A and line B to the ball directly, we could now refer to the P line A 
and P line A instead of referring to the ball. Now, now that we have the P line A, um, the point of line A and the point of line Y, well, the point of line A, X and Y values, we can now run our application. And when we run our application, we should be getting our line C and our line C should now actually be more similar to the value that we had before, 407 and a bit of change. The only reason it's a little bit different is because Flash isn't really great with non-pixel perfect things. So it could be that our element is in, isn't exactly in the same spot. And because it's just a bit off, that we're getting really, really slight, slight variations in the dots. So we have here uh, uh, an error that's below the 0 0.4 pixel level, and we don't care about it because that's roughly what we care about. Math is not a exact science kind of language. It's really about an, an animation tool, and that's good enough for us because all we really care about is perfect pixels. So we know that we have 407, and now we've seen how to work with global to local. And the same idea applies, by the way, also to, lo to global to local. So if we wanted to put a coordinate in our global area, such as let's say we wanted to move our circle to be exactly in the center of the stage. Now, it would be really hard for us to do that. We would have to do a lot of calculations. But instead of that, what we could do is basically just create a new variable to figure out the um, center point. And our center point in folder. And that is going to be a point. And we could go to holder.global to local. And now we could send it a new point. And we could very easily send it our actual, we know, let's just put here our hardcore, value, hardcore values. We know that we have 550 by 400. So let's just put here 550 divided by 2 and 400 divided by 2. We could have used the stage, but I just don't want to add more variables that we don't need to because this is a video we want to stay specific. So this should be our, our center of the stage as a point, but we will be getting it back as a coordinate inside of the global to local. AKA we're going to get the va this value converted into the actual real location inside of the holder. Now let's see if it's true. Let's see if we actually move our ball. If we actually go to our holder dot ball one and we change its X value to be the center point in holder. And same for holder dot ball two Y. And now if we run this, and if we really were, oh, not ball two, but still we're at ball one, we just wanted to move our X coordinate. And hopefully when we run this, we'll see that our ball will now shift exactly to the middle of the screen. And it, it definitely did. And we just completed our freebie. Now, again, if you are not one of our subscribers, I really encourage you. And it makes me feel really good, really, really good. So if you enjoyed this video, please click on the subscribe. Please give a comment. Um, be cool. Be safe, as some would say. And if you really want to learn with us, we have over 100 hours of training and flash and other topics. I really strongly encourage you to visit our site, zerotogeek.com. Um, you could Google us at Zero to Geek or Everything Flash. You should find us. We should be the first thing. Um, that's about it. Um, we have a lot of freebies and we have a lot of premium content. So I hope you join us or just subscribe. But if you don't do anything, eh, you kind of suck. Alrighty. Till next time.